Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our March 22nd, 2021 public planning hearing. Um, we have uh, four files this evening. Uh, the first one is uh, the Church of the Nazarene. Second one is Scully. Third one is O'Neill. And the fourth one is Peddler. So I'd like to uh, call this meeting to order. And um, I'll ask if there's any declaration of pecuniary interest. Anybody? Not seeing anything. If anything should arise, let me know. Um, two of our members are not able to uh, be at the meeting this evening. Deputy Mayor Desai and Councillor Valakat have sent their regrets. Um, also, we have 13 people registered to speak um, for uh, the to the the files. So we'll go through each file, and when it's time for the public to speak, I will let you know. And at that time, you can raise your hand on the computer, um, and um, our clerk will uh, let you in at the appropriate time. All right, I think that's all I need to say before we get going. So this public meeting was called under section 34 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990, as amended, concerning four proposed zoning bylaw amendments to bylaw 2004-50. Any person or public body is entitled to attend the public meeting and make written or oral submissions in support of or in opposition to any of the proposed amendments. Written comments should be submitted to the planning department. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the municipality of Gray Highlands before the zoning bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of council of the municipality of Gray Highlands to the local planning appeal tribunal. And in addition, they may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. It is important to note that if you wish to be mailed a notice of the passage of the bylaw and or notice of decision, and you do not live within 120 meters of the subject property, you must provide your request in writing to the planning department of the municipality of Gray Highlands. Registering for this virtual meeting does not represent your written request. A guideline sheet is available upon request. So our first file is Z15-2020. The registered owner is Markdale Church of the Nazarene. The legal description is lot one, PL 582 Markdale, part lot 101, concession one, SWTSR Glenelg, as in R41846 Gray Highlands. And the civic address is 239 Main Street West. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on February 24th, 2021 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. We'll now have our planner review the purpose and the effect of the proposed bylaw and advise of comments received. Matt? Thank you. Uh, the purpose and effect of this bylaw is to amend Schedule B1 of the zoning bylaw from heavy industrial to institutional to permit a church in the daycare center. Exception 418 will be applied to the institutional zoning to permit the daycare center as that's not permitted as a right in the institutional zone. Um, these lands were subject to a recent official plan amendment at the local level last summer, I think, some, somewhere around mid, mid year, there was a long process. So we redesignated these from mostly employment to, uh, well, it, it was more than just this property from employment to neighborhood. So now with the neighborhood designation, uses residential uses, institutional uses, the daycare, for example, those are permitted in that official plan designation. Um, 
in terms of comments, uh, county planning staff noted no concerns. Uh, Transport Great Highlands Transportation noted no concerns. Grace Hall Conservation Authority generally had no concerns at a high level. Building services advised the building permit will be required uh, and must conform to the requirements of the Ontario Building Code, as well as applicable law in place at the time of permit submission, including but not limited to Child Care and Early Years Acts. Uh, Great Highlands Fire and Emergency Services commented the application would classify as a change of use for the building under the Ontario Fire Code. A building permit is required to ensure all current code requirements are met. Public Utilities commented the applicant will need to ensure any requirement for lead sampling and flushing under OREG 24307. School, private schools, and child care centers are met where applicable. The, that stuff will get captured beyond the, the zoning stage from a, a zoning perspective. There's nothing too exceptional here now that the official plan has been amended. It took some time to get to this point. Um, there is a planning report that goes along with this and I, I believe the applicant's planner Ron is in attendance as well. That's at a high level pretty much what's going on there. Okay, thank you, Matt. Are there any questions or comments from council at this time for the planner? Okay, I do have one. Um, you said that daycare is not uh, permitted use in institutional. Um, the, some of the schools, um, Osprey I know has a, a Kids and Us. Is that, do you know if that's a, an exception on their zoning or? I could look that up uh, to be honest what I think would be prudent when we redo our zoning bylaws to just change it so that that isn't as a right thing. Cause I, I don't know where else, I don't even think daycare is listed as specifically as a permitted use anywhere. Um, okay. Where it seems intuitive, it would be the intu institutional zone. So this is more of a clarity thing. Yeah, okay. Is, um, yeah, I think a lot of the new schools when they're built, they're, they're, they do have daycares in them. So yeah, okay. So no questions, okay. Um, if the applicant or agent is present, you would like to make representation on your application, please identify yourself by stating your name for the record. And I believe Ron Davidson is in attendance. There's Ron, welcome Ron. Thank you, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, committee members. I shall be brief. Um, Matt's uh, pretty much uh, said everything that uh, really needs to be said. Um, just backing up a little bit, as you're likely aware, the uh, congregation is in, is in need of planning a new place because uh, they uh, severed off their church and the parsonage and their lot that, along with it and sold that. So now they need a new place to, to meet. Um, you, actually, what's kind of interesting here is the official plan amendment uh, for that whole area that Matt explained. It was driven, of course, by, by your municipality and not by us. We were just waiting in the wings for uh, for it to get approved so we could file for the rezoning. Uh, now you're, you're forced actually to rezone the property out of industrial because you can't have an industrial zone in a, in a designation in, in the neighborhood area designation. So um, this is a good thing. Um, so yeah, the, the application seems to make a lot of sense. Uh, it's, a, it's a good fit, a good, good building there for the congregation. And I know they're excited to be getting in there. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ron. Are there any questions from around the table for the agent? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. There's uh, some people registered from the public, so perhaps there's some uh, questions that may need to be answered there, Ron. Um, is there anyone present who would like to make the submission in support of or opposition to this application or have any questions or comments about this application? And uh, please note that you will be required to state your full name and address for the clerk and that your comments will be included in the minutes and will form part of the municipal records. So we have some people registered. Uh, thank you, Chair Allen. Um, I will remind you if you wish to speak, please use the raise hand feature. I don't see anybody raising their hand wishing to speak at this present time. Okay, perhaps they're just interested in hearing what's oh, going on. 
actually, somebody just raised their hand. Jane Roth, I'm gonna allow her to speak now. Jane, you should be able to unmute yourself and speak now. So, hello everyone. Um, so my yeah. name is Jane Roth and I live on the property that abuts the Rotary Park. So I'm just down the street on the other side from the uh, designated property. So I'm okay. just curious as to why, um, was a daycare always in the plan? Um, Ron, do you wanna answer that? Has it always been their intentions? Uh, when I filed the rezoning application, which geez, was probably pushing a good year ago, if not more, um, those were my instructions that they, there was definitely going to be a daycare uh, part of this facility, so yes, so, I mean, this, the distinction is I thought the first notice we got didn't speak about a daycare. And, and I could be um, wrong. It could have been there all along. And the second one then designated that it will have a dual usage. It will have the church as well as a daycare. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, were there more than one, uh, was there more than one notice that went out? Um, I, got, I got two. Okay. I got one last year and I got one this year. Okay, so the which the first one you said didn't include that. Do you have that in front of you? I don't. I don't. Okay. Sorry, but you could look it up and see if I'm incorrect or not. And it, and yeah. it's not really it's it's not a point of contention or criticism. It's just a point of curiosity as to whether okay. that expanded. Okay. Um, I see Ron with his hand up, and I think Matt um, maybe has an answer too. Who would like to go first? I'll bow to Matt. Okay, Matt. On the notice, I could follow up uh, with Cassandra and Elaine as they do the circulation, but I'm in the folder here, and I only see the one because I believe we we refused to deem this complete until the official plan was in place. So I don't think we would have circulated a, a notice for the amendment until quite recently, but I, I will double check. I'm not seeing one in here though. Mm, okay. 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 Ron. Yeah. Maybe I'll take a crack at this, Matt. Um, I'm wondering if the first notice pertained to the very general official plan amendment, which of course would not get into fine details like a, uh, uh, like a daycare. It probably could. You're probably correct. Yeah. 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 It, it maybe came from um, to do with the municipality's um, intention of, of rezoning that, not the specific rezoning of the church property. Right. Yeah. So, Ron, if you wouldn't mind, and I have to comment that both services are very welcome here. I'm just wondering, is it going to be a public daycare? Or is it a private one for your parishioners or how is it going to play out? Yeah, I'm, Mr. Chair, I, I actually, I don't know that. And um, whereas a, uh, uh, I, I don't actually attend this church, I am a planning consultant working on behalf of. The okay, Department. okay. Yeah. So there isn't anyone here from the church per se? I'm not sure no. if anyone's listening. No. Okay, okay. But I'm sure if you reached out to them, they would be glad to answer your questions. Oh, I'm sure they would. It was just, it was just a comment that I made. Yeah. So thank you. I, that's all I wanted to clarify. Okay. Thank you, Jane. So I'll give uh, one more chance. If um, Is there anyone present who would like to make a submission in support of or opposition to this application or have any questions or comments? Anybody else, Raylene? Nobody else? No, there's no one else. Okay. Thank you. Any last uh, comments or questions from around the table? No? Okay, thank you, Ron. I guess we'll be seeing you a little later in the meeting. Not to Wait. my knowledge. Oh, I thought you had another file. Um, Matt, can you jump in and tell me if I have another file? Yes, the next one. Okay. Don't go anywhere. I'll stop. That's for, for Scully. Boston Funeral Home. Scully? Boston yeah. Funeral Home. The Aquaman. Right. Yeah. Sorry, yes. I shall stay here. Okay. I'm glad I mentioned that. Yes. Okay. All right. 
So as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Okay, the next file is Z06-2021. The registered owner is Roberta Elizabeth Scully. The legal description is part lot 146, concession one, SWTSR, Artemisia, as in R529904, Gray Highlands. The civic address is 774. 294 Highway 10. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on February 24th, 2021 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. And we'll now have our planner review the purpose and the effect of the proposed bylaw and advice of comments received. Matt? Sorry, all my alerts just started going. Um, okay. This proposal uh, is from Georgian Bay Cremation Services for Fawcett Funeral Home in Flusherton. Uh, they're looking to expand their end of life burial services by using a new method of disposing of human remains known as aquamation. Aquamation involves using a blend of hot water and a specialized alkali solution to break down the human body. The proposal is to operate this business within the accessory structure that exists on Roberta Scully's residential property on Highway 10, uh, just on the north end of Flesherton. The subject lands are currently zoned residential and require rezoning to Highway Service and Commercial, or C2, to permit this use. So the proposed purpose and effect is to amend the schedule of the zoning bylaw from residential to Highway Service and Commercial. Uh, at the official plan level, this is designated a secondary settlement area, specifically Flusherton, and then also as an employment area within Flesherton. So commercial uses is kind of the intent, commercial industrial uses of an employment area. The existing residential zoning is, is technically not in conformity with the official plan. Um, so the proposal to rezone this to commercial generally is more aligned with the official plan. The C2 zone would permit uh, the existing residential use being accessory to what would become, we could consider it the principal use being the proposed aquamation facility. Uh, so no exceptions would be required. Uh, everything would just work with that C2 zoning. Uh, comments, Gray, Gray County planning staff had no concerns. Uh, the Gray Salville Conservation Authority uh, expressed no objections as there's no natural hazard or heritage features and it doesn't impact their regulated area. Gray Highlands Transportation noted no concerns. Building services noted no concerns and advised a building permit would be required. Uh, Great Highlands Fire and Emergency Services commented with no concerns. Public Utilities noted that there will be a sewer use agreement that is, to, is required before this can begin through discussion with the director and the applicant. Uh, in order for the applicant to get their license from the regulatory agency for this use, they had to demonstrate that it's in the public interest the planning process in general, uh, that's kind of the point of planning is to always be demonstrating things that are in the public interest. So uh, we all agreed that going through the zoning amendment exercise would, would perform that demonstration. And then anything to do with the sewer use could then be addressed after the zoning is in place. So they, they couldn't technically start their operation till that's uh, addressed through the, the public utilities department. But this is the first step. Uh, that's all from me. Okay, thank you, Matt. Are there any questions for the planner from members? Kathy? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just wondering about the use of water for this process and um, the report does speak to uh, the public utilities department testing the effluent um, and there being a legal agreement about that, um, but I am wondering about the quantity of water used and the, the well that's on this property is 
likely a residential well. So I just have some questions around that, whether there is any process or any plan to determine if, um, you know, there is enough water to, for the use that's being proposed. Uh, it says, I'm sure it won't be 800 liters every day, but um, that's what's being suggested here. It could be 800 liters per day. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, comment on that, Matt? Is that um, water supply, is that a, a requirement to rezone? So it's a bit of a fuzzy area. Um, I did talk to the public utilities director about what would be considered a normal residential use to be fine on a well. And if I recall correctly, the amount of, I think one and a half of these operations per day effectively coincided with a residential use. So there's already a residential use. Um, I think the intent is to have about two, maybe two, one or two of these processes per day to a maximum of three. And I gather that would depend on the availability of business. But in talking with the applicant, the amount of of these that happen provincially in a year, his expectation would be between one or two. So it's effectively like having two on one lot. He didn't, I did not see any engineering report on can the well do that. It is not an exceptionally heavy use. It is a bit more, it's effectively double a residential use. So it's not like, uh, just off the top, I know Four Seasons Linen Factory, I know from working there, that, that has a, a lot of, when it was a commercial, you know, laundry facility, that'd be different, right? So this is, I, I don't think it's quite at the threshold for a whole study on it, but um, it is more than a residential use. There are um, units in Flesherton, um, duplexes and five unit apartments that are operating on one well. Um, so does that um, answer your question, Kathy? Yes, thanks, uh, Matt. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, so I still see the our, the agent is present. Um, if you would like to make representation on your application, please identify yourself and uh, state your name for the record or by stating your name for the record. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm still Ron Davidson. I'm the planner working uh, for Mr. Fawcett in the filing of this application and his daughter. I'm not a whole lot to say. This is somewhat similar to the last application that uh, council just dealt with in the sense that you have an official plan designation on the property that doesn't line up with the zoning. Uh, the lands are zoned residential and it, that's fine, but the designation of the official plan is commercial or, or highway commercial. So these lands are supposed to be zoned C2, which is exactly what uh, is being proposed. As Matt indicated quite clearly that the intended use actually is, is appears to be a permitted use under the C2, C2 zone. So it's not like a special provision is being added. The last thing I'll say is I'll chime in a little bit on the, on the water taking issue. I indicated in my report that uh, um, each one of these acclimation services would be, uh, would utilize about 600 liters of water um, and, and I think Matt is right in terms of uh, what the intentions are here for in terms of how many per day. Um, just to put, the only thing I'll say is to put things in perspective. When you hit a large number or a large amount of water usage, uh, that's where the province does step in. Um, and, and that's 50,000 liters a day. And that's where you need what's known as a permit to take water. And that's something where you get a hydrogeologist involved and it has to go through the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks. And we're nowhere close to that. That's not to say, though, that you, you know, if you're at 49,000, you don't have anything to worry about. I'm just saying that's the benchmark of an, in Ontario when, when the province gets, gets really concerned. Um, that's it for my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Are there any questions for the agent from around the table? Okay. Is there anyone present who would like to make a submission in support of or opposition to this application or have any questions or comments about this application? 
And I see there are some people registered for this file. Raylene, who do we have first? Well, I don't have anybody with their hand raised at the present time, but I do know that Rob Fawcett, who is the applicant for this, is in attendance. Uh, Rob, if you would like to speak, please use the raise hand feature. And I'm not seeing Rob raising his hand. Um, was there okay. anybody else that wanted to speak on this? Please use the raise hand feature. Nobody. It, um, I think there are about uh, six people registered for this one. Um, again, perhaps they're just interested in hearing what's being proposed. Um, I don't wanna miss anybody if there is somebody wishing to speak. No. Okay, well, if somebody does, we'll come back to them, hopefully before we get to the, the end. Um, are there uh, any other questions or comments? Paul? Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I think uh, Councillor Little raises a, a good point about water usage. And I was just trying to look up I don't know if I'm Googling just what the average teenager uses in a day for water. I know I have three of them <laughs> and I was going to just, you know, because, you know, water use, I mean, you have a shower, you have certain things, you know, it's surprising how much water you do use during those regular activities. But I just, it would be good to know and comparable as what the average person uses for water in a household compared to what's being asked here. And I think that would put it in good perspective on that. And, and, uh, you know, probably a shower alone probably uses uh, 100 to 200 liters just for a shower. But anyway, I don't want to, it would just good to know the comparables because then it puts things in perspective. And, and I don't know if anybody has that answer right now, but, uh, you know, it's surprising how much water you do use in a day. And I think there's some calculation or something out there that probably would say that. And I, I just raise that for, for that purpose. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The, um, when we went through our, our water rate study, they said that the average customer in Markdale is a uh, 100 and, is 180 cubic meters per year, which is 180,000 liters. So I took 100, 1,800 uh, liters based on three of these, um, um, I don't know what we wanna call them, procedures a day times six days a week. And that came out to 560,000 liters, which is the equivalent of three average users. So if they're not doing as many a day or they're not doing six days a week, then it is, as I think Matt said, about one and a half times the residential use. So it, it could, could be, um, with the residential use and this at their maximum could be equivalent to, to uh, about three or four residential average customers. So, okay, um, Raylene, nobody's indicated they wanna speak? Still none, Chair Allen. Okay, thank you. Um, so if there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. So thank you, Ron. Hey folks. Bye. Okay, our next file is Z11-2021. The owner is Kathleen Ann O'Neill. The legal description is lot 17 PL22 Artemisia TWR3888805, except the easement therein, re lot seven 
PL22 Artemisia Gray Highlands. And the civic address is 111 Hawthorne Place. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on February 24th, 2021 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. We'll now have our planner review the purpose and the effect of the proposed bylaw and advise of comments received. Matt? Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, this application is more of just a technical exercise because of the way the bylaws written. Um, so the subject property is, is roughly 1,350 square meters. It's through lot with approximately 22 meters of frontage on both Hawthorne Place and Cedars, Cedars Resort. I don't know what Cedars Resort is, if it's a street or a place or what. Our, their, our data doesn't tell us, but um, as long as it is, it is a uh, it is a place. Oh, perfect. Well, now I'll know forever. Uh, until recently, the subject property contained an old cottage and one accessory building. The old cottage, which was in extreme disrepair, was recently demolished, leaving only the accessory building on the subject property. The proposal is to expand the accessory building and convert it into a dwelling uh, to replace that cottage. While a dwelling already existed on the property, the proposal involves expanding and changing the use of an existing accessory structure. The subject property does not have frontage on a public street and no exception exists within the zoning bylaw to permit the redevelopment on this lot that fronts two private roads. The lot also falls within 120 meters of a portion of Lake Eugenia that is classified as a significant wetland and is therefore uh, subject to a holding provision. No lift of hold records were on file for the subject property. The lift of hold has been applied for through a separate application. The purpose and effect of this bylaw is to amend Schedule E1 from Residential Shoreline RS to Residential Shoreline RS-13. Exception 13 is the number that we use as an exception to permit development on properties lacking frontage on a public street. So effectively, there, there was a cottage here that's gone and they're turning a, a, a shed or a, a cabin structure into the new cottage. Um, there's, it's, it's generally straightforward other than the oddity of the, the private road. So our official plan and the county plan both require that if uh, you're to permit development on a property lacking frontage on a public street, there has to be an agreement on title saying that the municipality is not responsible for a whole list of things like road maintenance. This, I gather, is one of, if not the only road where we've got development like this, where we don't have one of those on file uh, that anyone is aware of. Our solicitor is in the process of doing a title search to see if one already exists. If one does not exist, he's going to draft us a template agreement that we can then use to send to council. Um, to put on title for this property to allow the amendment to go forward. Um, comments. The county comment to county planning provided positive comments are received from the Conservation Authority regarding the natural heritage and hazard adjacent to the subject property. That'd be the Lake Eugenia, which this does not uh, directly front, by the way, it is inland a bit. Um, but county planning staff have no further concerns. The Grace Hobble Conservation Authority commented they generally have no objection to the subject proposal as it is not anticipated to negatively impact their regulated area, any natural hazard or heritage features. They recommend that grading and drainage details be submitted on the final site plan indicating that drainage will be directed away from the proposed developments and not onto adjacent properties. These details should be completed to the satisfaction of Gray Highlands and the GSCA and will be required as a component of the GSCA permit approval process. They will also require the septic plan uh, as they understand a new system is being proposed. They recommend the property be revegetated re as quickly as possible to ensure erosion of the bare soil throughout the property is minimized. Gray Highlands Transportation commented the applicant is to be aware the subject property has access on Hawthorne, which is a private road in the proposed development should adhere to the private road agreement and the association agreement. 
Building services commented they have no concerns with the proposed development and the applicant is to be advised that a building permit will be required for the addition and for the conversion and must conform to the requirements for a dwelling under the Ontario Building Code at the time of permit submission. Fire and emergency services had no concerns and public utilities had no concerns. And I'll leave it there for questions. Okay, thank you, Matt. Are there any questions for the planner? No. Okay, so if the applicant or agent is present and you would like to make representation on your application, please identify yourself by stating your name for the record. Is um, anybody wishing to speak on this file? Um, so I do notice that Kathleen O'Neill is in attendance. Um, but I haven't seen that she raised her hand. So Kathleen, if you would like to speak, please use the raise hand feature and I will be able to unmute you. And just to let Kathleen know, you don't need to speak if you don't want to, but you're welcome to. Not seeing anything. Okay. No. All right. Um, is there anyone present who would like to make a submission in support of or opposition to this application or have any questions or comments about this application? Uh, Kathleen was the only person registered that indicated this file was their topic and I don't see any other hands raised. Um, okay, because I do see, um, I have a list here. Oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Should never doubt you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, any further questions or any questions from around the table here? Nothing. Okay. As there is no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Okay, the next um, file is Z13-2021. The registered owner is JB Pedler Limited. And the legal description is Park Lot 13, Napoleon Street South, 14 Napoleon Street South, PL20, Artemisia, except Part 3, expropriated Part lot GS50409, Gray Highlands, and it has a civic address of 158 Napoleon Street. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on February 24th, 2021, to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. We'll now have the planner review the purpose and the effect of the proposed bylaw and advise of comments received. Matt? Okay, uh, until 2016, this property was used by Scott Hay Log Home Builders to operate a log home business for I, what I've been told is roughly 30 years. The log home operation involved the open storage of large quantities of logs on the property. The zoning on the subject property is development, which only permits uses existing on the date of adoption of the zoning bylaw. The log home business, so our bylaw was passed in 2004-2005 uh, initially, and then again updated in 2011. Uh, so the log home business was subsequently a permitted use when the zoning bylaw was updated uh, because it existed on the day of passing of that bylaw and presumably was legal uh, the first time we, we did the first comprehensive bylaw for Grey Highlands. John Pedler purchased the subject property in 2016 to use as the home base for his landscaping company. Given that the previous use of the property was a storage area for large quantities of logs, John believed using the property to store large quantities of stone and landscaping material was also permitted on site. John is currently operating the business from the property and inquired about obtaining a building permit for an additional building uh, last year in 2020. 
At the time, planning staff informed John that a zoning amendment would be required before any additional buildings could be permitted. The proposal is therefore to change the zoning from development to neighborhood convenience commercial with a site specific exception to permit the property to be used as a landscaping business. The amendment will also clearly legalize the use as a permitted use, whereas the current legality is fuzzy, depending on whether or not the change from a log storage facility to a stored stone storage facility is significant enough to constitute a change in use and therefore not be permitted in the development zone. So the purpose and effect will be to amend uh, Schedule F1 from development to neighborhood and convenience commercial with exception number 417. Exception 417 will permit and regulate the use of the property as a landscaping yard and sales operation. Uh, provincial policy level, it, it, there's not too much to be concerned here. This is a settlement area, so things like this are, are permitted in settlement areas. And the Gray County plan doesn't have a, a lot of uh, parameters around things like this either. It's, it's pretty aligned with that. The Gray Highlands official plan, uh, generally, it, it does permit some, some commercial uses, provided they... Uh, uh, service uh, their accessory to the surrounding cottage and recreational development. This met that uh, intent, in, in my opinion, given that there, there are a lot of property. We just see stuff, uh, development on Lake Eugenia doing landscaping services from this company in particular, as a matter of fact. Uh, and these, so the zoning that was proposed, uh, I've got a bit of a, an analysis here. Um, First thing, when the application came in, uh, John just wants to do his business. Um, so he asked for commercial. And I went and looked at what Center Gray had. I was trying to find some comparable sites and settlement areas in Gray Highlands to see what was there. Uh, the the Flasherton Lumber Yard didn't work because it's downtown commercial. So that's not really applicable here. So I went to Center Gray and it used the C3 zone with an exception. The C3 zone doesn't really permit a lot of stuff as of right. Um, so then by putting an exception on it, you limit it to exactly what's being asked for effectively. After all the circulation, I got looking a bit more at the light industrial zone, which does as of right permit his use, no exception would be required. Although the light industrial zone also as of right permits some heavier activities like light manufacturing, for example. So if someone, if this were to be sold, you know, tomorrow, uh, and it were light industrial, it, it would be, there's potential for what's arguably a more intensive use than, than storing stuff there. So the C3 zone will work. It'll, it'll achieve what the applicant wants and it'll make it not go beyond that. Um, whether or not it's the most appropriate and light industrial arguably could be, uh, but then does it allow too much in this area? So that's where that's at for now. Uh, in terms of comments, County planning staff noted no concerns. They did pass along comments from transportation services uh, that a commercial entrance permit will be required to update the existing entrance on the county road. Uh, Gray, I'll skip here to the Gray Highlands Transportation has been talking to the applicant. The intent is to close off the other existing entrance onto Napoleon Street. So County Road 13 will be the only entrance and they had no concerns with that. Uh, Grace Hobble Conservation Authority noted uh, they generally have no objection because it's not uh, anticipated to negatively impact a regulated area or any natural heritage or hazard features. They did recommend that a grading and drainage details be submitted on the site plan to indicate that drainage will be directed away from the proposed developments and not onto adjacent properties. Building services had no comments, uh, advised that a, a building permit would be required and that it must conform to the Ontario Building Code and applicable law at the time of permit submission. Uh, the applicant should also be advised the requirements for accessibility as noted in 3. Point, section 3.8 of the Ontario Building Code may also be required. Fire and emergency services had no concerns. Public utilities had no concerns. And the clerk has just sent me an email, I'm gonna open here, of a message from someone from the public who I don't believe is in attendance. Just find them up here. Uh, this individual uh, is indicating that they are the five acre property abutting the south side of this property uh, and they are asking 
is the proposed sales used to be retail, wholesale, or both? What are the proposed hours, days of operation? Will the entrance exit be County Road 13 or Napoleon Street or both? Um, so question three has been answered. Um, in terms of the other two, there's not a lot of parameters right now on the proposal around whether it's retail or wholesale. It will just permit sales generally. Uh, and there is currently no proposal to regulate hours of op or days of operation. That's all I have for comments. Okay, thanks, Matt. Okay, any questions for the planner from around the table? Paul? So thank you, Mr. Chair. And I was going to give you uh, an example, maybe, I don't know if you checked out Maxwell Stone. I know back when Osprey, we did an official plan amendment and zoning uh, for that on Highway 4, and it has uh, um, uh, the sale of stone. And I think there's some manufacturing of stone on that as well. I don't know if you had looked at that when you said about you weren't sure how to, to, to move through on it. I, I just wondered if you, if you looked at what was on that site. Matt. <laughs> is that the one east of Maxwell, a couple kilometers? Yeah. So yeah. I, I did look at that one. The problem with using that as a comparable is that is a rural, initially would have been, actually, let me just double check here, but it would have initially been a rural land use designation. So it's actually, it's a C4. Yeah, so at the OP level, it would have been rural, and then they had to do an OP amendment to space extensive, uh, and it's all compressed here, so I can, uh, space, space extensive industrial and commercial, which outside of a settlement area is necessary for use like that, and then you put the C4 zone on it. Inside a settlement area that's already, you you can't really official plan amendment change the settlement area uh, to that. It's not ne necessarily required or appropriate in the settlement area because you're already allowed kind of a wider range of uses there. And then obviously there, the C4 isn't quite as applicable uh, in a non-rural area. So I did check there, but that didn't work either. <laughs> okay. I just know that it's it's one that does have a lot of stone display and stuff like that. But you're right. You refresh my mind on that. Of that because they had to go through an amendment process to create that and uh, and that so good I'm glad you I'm glad you looked at it thank you they're um, they're also doing a lot of cutting of stone there um, so okay any other questions or comments okay seeing none we'll go on um, if the applicant or their agent is present and would like to make a make representation on your application. Please identify yourself by stating your name for the record. Is, I know John's on the list of attendees. Is John wishing to speak? John, you should be able to unmute and speak now. John? John, are you there? He is unmuted and he is in attendance here. He's not coming through. I'm going to try disable talking and trying it again. I'm hearing something. There we go, John. Oh, we can it's very, just very quiet. barely hear you. Okay, oh, speak very loudly. Does that help? It's a bit better. Better. Okay. Um, I guess my only comment is that running the business in the property, days Oh, no, we can't. We can't hear you, John.
can um, Raylene, can you give him the number to to call in? I am just trying to grab that now. If you give me Thank a moment. You. Uh, so, John, I have just sent you in the chat of this meeting the telephone number with the ID and passcode so that you can call in just from a telephone. I was um, I was thinking I could go on to the next to let the public speak, but I think um, to be fair, the proponent should speak first. Okay, so we have John on there now. John, can you speak? Hey guys, sorry about that. Perfect. That's better. Okay, go That's ahead, better. John. Great. Um, no, I just wanted to say that uh, the way Scott he kind of used the property was he was he's in the yard constantly every day uh, with the chainsaws going and whatnot. And I feel like kind of the way that I'm going to use the property is we come in in the morning at at seven o'clock, we load the trucks, and we're kind of gone for the day, and we're back. 5, 5.30, unload the trucks, and we're kind of out of the yard. So as far as the uh, the the noise in the community throughout the day, there really won't be. Um, we'll also, we really, we don't really, there'll be a little bit of noise on Saturday, or not really noise, but there might be people in and out on Saturday, but it'd be relatively quiet. Um, I do respect the neighbors around there, and that's kind of why I want to close off the Napoleon entrance so we're not coming in and out on the uh, on the small the small roads and uh, because the trucks are noisy and you know it's seven o'clock in the morning when you're leaving so so I do uh, do respect that so that's why I want to put the main road off of the main entrance off of 13 and at the end of the day I just want I want to clean the property up it's not the most uh, uh, attractive piece of property and it is high visibility on 13 and kind of what we do is we make properties 
look good. So that's kind of what I want to do at the end of the day. I want to uh, put some green space out front, plant some trees. I, I plan to put up a nice, uh, nice building, uh, 50 by 90 uh, shop with some office space. And I guess at this point, I really don't plan on um, using it as a retail facility. It's strictly going to be for our own, our own use. Uh, we will store materials on site, but it'll again it'll, it's not meant at this i don't plan on really opening a retail facility where i'd sell to the public so okay i guess that's it yeah all right so it, it's it's mainly a, a a depot for yourself you'll pick up and and drop off in the evening uh there'll be no cutting of stone or anything all all your cutting is is done on site yep. um okay and so the letter that we received it asked about days of operation so, so really it's, um, it's when you're working, you'll, again, you'll come in in the morning and again in the evening and that, that's about it. There won't be, there won't be any sales from the site. If, if you have um, clients, you, will you possibly meet there at your office? Um, yeah, potentially. We typically I meet them on 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 their property, but um, the rare occasion, yeah, there there could be people come back to the property. Like I plan on doing some nice displays and just you know do our own. There might be a seating area created, and right. you know we may have our own just displays to show people's things. But okay, all right, yeah. And um, as far as the C three zoning, with the exception, you understand that if that's um granted that if and when you sell the property the the next owners if they want to change the use they would have to go through another zoning bylaw amendment right yeah and matt, matt was explaining that to me um earlier in the week just kind of going over the different zoning um applications i guess and uh yeah like for what the c3 i guess it it applies to me and that's all I, I would really need. Um, whether it makes sense to go further, I, I don't. I just don't want to hold up uh, um, the process. I guess of taking it to the next step. I think this this suits my needs, and I think I'd just be happy to carry okay. on. All right, and and last comment: the entrance off Napoleon that will be completely dropped off or uh, blocked off, so that there will be no traffic coming in that way. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to remove that and uh, close that close it off completely. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, are there any questions uh, for John? Paul? Yeah, a couple questions. Uh, just on that entrance now, John, that is there is a bit of a lower area there and just in the sense of access if it ever became wet or flooded. Do you think you'd still need that uh, Napoleon entrance as an emergency entrance? Just if there was ever a situation that I don't know. And that may be not a case. Yeah. I don't. Uh, potentially, but um, like I plan on building the driveway up too. Um, the, the way the property is like, and the, that's another thing, I would see the property in my kind of eyes, it was a commercial property when it was a gravel pit because they removed yeah. all the gravel out of there at one point in time. Um, so, and Scott has brought Phil in over time and he's built up the, the west end of the property um but i plan on putting because the, the way that that entrance is now it's quite steep and you'd never you know it's going to have to be some obvious alterations to it to make it uh make it passable so um yeah i plan on building it up and maybe you're right um paul maybe it is would be a good thing to keep i just don't want the neighbors like at the end of the day i'm trying to keep everybody in the neighborhood happy and i just i know how our trucks are they're their diesels and you know you hit a pothole with them and it sounds like there's an earthquake happening it's uh, you know the boxes on them rattle pretty good so. so so i guess just to follow up with that through you mr chair then is it a possibility that your commercial entrance is to where you're talking about and if because on that c3 it, it could be permitted to build a house that not necessarily shutting it off but only it would be for personal use or private use you know off in napoleon just that i just think that if there's a situation where an emergency access needed. Um, if you close it up, put rocks and trees there, and you needed that access, you know, maybe you just don't use it, and you sort of temporarily close it off. You just, I just think about it in the sense of it being lower land that 
if you need it, uh, you know, that purpose for something that was more personal, just not to, or an emergency situation. That's, that was the only reason I raised that. And uh, I do have one other question, Mr. Chair. Okay, sure, go ahead. And just to you, John, in the sense of I'm looking at the C3, and it does say commercial use intended to service the daily needs of the immediate area residents uh, with stone. Sometimes I was going looking through uh, you, and, and I only ask this question to make sure that you're, you're capturing what you visit your business is today and what it could be in the future, because uh, right. you know, a lot of us do ask that question. Is, are you making sure you're capturing, for an example, engraving stone, or if you were doing uh, granite and you were, you know, how you take granite and you cut it in slices, is that something that you may still want to do on site and then take that product to the site where you're building a fireplace or a wall and you know you got to cut that granite mm -hmm. you know better than I, I I'm not a stone mason or a stone guy but I, I I just I guess to Matt long as that I think that should be you would want that to be allowed because sometimes you may want to take that finished product to the site but you may have to do some work to it I think does this make sure that allows you to do that right and that's and that's true we have done we have done that before in the past there isn't a lot of cutting that happens maybe three or four times a year. Like if we have a big step that we have to cut down uh, just for transportation, basically, because we get a lot of our deliveries uh, brought in on large tractor trailers in bulk. So some of the stuff is massive and we have to cut it down just so we can get it to site. So yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. So I guess that to you, Mr. Chair, to Matt, does that allow that to happen? I guess, Matt, is that what we're make sure we're capturing that? Go ahead, Matt. So if someone, if let's go five years down the road and I'm not here, anyone's not here and you've got the bylaw officer and someone's complaining about something and it's stone cutting, for example, and the wording says a permitted use is a stone storage and sales yard. I don't think a bylaw officer is going to issue an enforcement thing at that point. To me, that is accessory to that use. Um, it, it's hard to get down in the weeds to like, if you took, for example, uh, the light industrial zone, like you wouldn't list specifically all of the operations of every type of facility. It's, it's supposed to be high level. So we have to be assuming that it, the use would be related to everything accessory possible reasonably to this type of operation so in my mind if we're passing this it's with the assumption that cutting could be occurring on this facility okay o occurring occasionally because if it got into that yeah. they were cutting stone eight hours a day five days a week that moves it into the industrial in my way of thinking if it got to the point where it's almost like a different business then than the sale of landscaping materials uh, and you're you're now a stone cutter and artist or something then then yeah that would arguably be constitute a different use okay all right thank you got, just i have another example that i'm not trying to just want to make sure it works for john so i saw on some other websites so say you had a, a nice big rock and you wanted to put in the mcqueens and then you delivered it you know what i mean like you may carve somebody's name into a stone or something and i don't know john if you do that very often and maybe you would do that yeah. on site too i i don't know you just it just i think the key thing is this is it serves the immediate area residents not something you may do and you see it all the time like you see you know somebody's marker stone that says their name that's that type of thing i i just look at that something it would be small and, and uh anyway i'll leave it at that okay okay all right um were there any other questions from around the table? No. Okay. Um, is there anyone present who would like to make a submission in support of or opposition to this application or have any questions or comments about this application? And uh, John, stay on the line. You may have to answer some questions here. Okay. Uh, Raylene, do we have anybody wanting to speak? Yep. We have Ellie Green in attendance. You should be able to speak now, Ellie. Hi there, everybody. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak. So uh, I, so my name is Ellie Green. I live at uh, 176 Redan Street, which is the corner of Redan and Napoleon. So I just wanted to uh, get in on the closing of 
158 entrance and find out a bit more details on that. Um, I, I definitely appreciate that John has flagged this and has decided to make that step. I think it's really important. So I just wanted to find out the details, timeline, what that would look like. Okay. John, do you want to, can you answer that for Ellie? Uh, sure. Hey, Ellie. Um, yeah, like, uh, I think I don't, I, I plan on doing it this summer. As far as the timeline, I guess I don't know exactly. Uh, I need to apply for an entrance permit. And I don't know if I, I don't know if I have to have the zoning amendment taken care of before I do that, or if I can do that now and put the driveway in off of 13, I, I suppose I could. Um, but yeah, like I, I just plan on cutting that off completely just to cut down the traffic coming, uh, coming through the streets. Okay, and so does that mean that the driveway that's currently on 13 is not a proper driveway? It needs to be upgraded to a commercial entrance. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I wanted to uh, take note of that, I guess, with some of the other comments of it remaining open. Um, I'm directly across and I know that in town activity, there's a lot more people. Um, there's a lot more activity and yeah, definitely want you guys to succeed, but the truck fleets, it's, it's definitely a significant change um, since previously uh, the previous owner, Scotty. So yeah, that was the only thing I wanted to clarify. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Ellie. And Raylene, is there anybody else wishing to speak? Uh, no, I'm not seeing anybody else with their hand raised. Except for Matt. Matt, go ahead. Just for clarity for everyone. So this commercial use is subject to site plan control, which will need to be done before uh, John's building is built. Um, obviously, there's this kind of a legal non-conforming thing going on here. Uh, we haven't, and the planning department told bylaw to go out and enforce anything given that it, it, it seemed like such a similar use to the initial use and people are have their businesses closed right now it didn't seem like a great thing to do at the time and we hadn't been receiving complaints so uh, the use is still occurring it will not be expanding in terms of the building until the site plan process is done the general understanding between myself the transportation director and john at this point has been that closing of the entrance will be a part of that process uh, it, it technically could happen prior to uh, the approval of the site plan just being scoped into the site plan with the understanding that it'll look like however he submits his site plan at the end of the day. Um, but I think John mentioned to me he's aiming to get building probably like August, September. So provided there's no bumps with this zoning amendment, that's a reasonable timeline to have the site plan in place and, and probably get started on both as building and closing of that entrance. Okay, thank you. I think um, the entrance, uh, you, you said that that would be dealt with during site plan control. Um, I think um, that that probably is, is going to be the biggest concern for neighbors. And, and not only for neighbors, but also the, um, the, the roads, if, they've getting, if they're getting large stone delivered, that's a lot of weight on those uh, Eugenia roads. So uh, I personally would want to see um, that being part of the requirements is to close that Napoleon Street entrance off completely. And whether we can put that in the zoning or whether that's just that site plan um, is fine. And I know we're not making decisions tonight. We're just gathering information, but um, we can discuss that more when it comes back to council. But uh, as I say, I think that's the main concern probably for neighbors is the fact that trucks could potentially be coming in that entrance. So, uh, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wonder whether uh, likewise, you know, the occasional cutting of stone could be part of the exception or uh, 
just so there's clarity there, because, you know, downstream, if people complain when uh, John's cutting stone or, or uh, engraving stone, if it's, if it's only an occasional use, uh, you know, it's a permitted use rather than the constant stuff that you referred to that would require a, a light industrial right. zoning. Okay. Is there a provision within the exception to include the uh, occasional stone cutting or, or, or is it necessary? I, I just think, you know, when uh, downstream, if people get uh, concerned and want to start complaining to the bylaw enforcement people, if it's permitted use, then uh, it's, it's pretty clear with the, uh, if it's left uh, a gray area, then we could, it could be a gray area and, and create some issues. Thank you. So, okay, thanks, Tom. So before you answer, Matt, um, I'm gonna ask John a question. If, if there was ever cutting of stone, is that um, something that would be done inside the building or when your stone is dropped off, it's dropped off outside and you would have to cut it outside. Yes, we would, we would cut it outside. Um, we're, wouldn't be like, you know, Maxwell's is a, obviously a big, um, stone cutting facility. We would just, you know, have like handheld quick cut saws cutting six inch steps or, or whatever it would be, you know, like if we, if we have a step to cut the saws might be going for, maybe 30 minutes at the most um, per step kind of thing. So it, it truly isn't very often that we would cut it, but I think you're right. Um, I think it would be a good idea to, to put it in there just for the future, you know, if in case we do get a neighbor that, uh, you know, isn't happy with the, the stone cutting when it does happen. Okay. All right. So Matt, uh, can that be incorporated? Yeah. Given like the, uh, John's application and he sounds agreeable to that. So as a person who has to interpret these a lot of the time, I would say that would be a very good idea to put it in there for clarity's sake. Um, okay. Both obviously permit it and limit it at the same time. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to, okay, Paul. I, I don't want to drag on the part about the other entrance, but I remember March of 2016, uh, there was a lot of flooding that happened in Eugenia, and I'm not a sh I'm not sure if it affected the site. My only concern about that other entrance completely being eliminated is it is an excavated area, and if there's ever a situation of an emergency circumstance, uh, certainly closing it off for commercial use and all that stuff, but just completely shutting it off, I think could be. I don't know. I, I don't have the. I don't have, know somebody in the area has history of it being. Uh, but I know, March of 2016, there was a lot of flooding around Eugenia and all through that area and just east of that site. And I don't know if it comes around and filters into that area or not. But uh, being an excavated uh, commercial site as being um, an ex gravel pit, there's a hole in the ground, and you're working down in a hole in the ground, and then just. If, if your commercial site is, is gets blocked or whatever, or your whatever, just having a separate personal lot, just to have an area, if you had to get out, as long as it was available in the sense if you had to get out, it was there for emergency purposes only or whatever, but just blocking it off completely and taking a culvert out, I think could, I just think, just in my mind, I just think it would be wise to leave that as a secondary access for an emergency purposes and I'll leave it at that but I, I would suggest that John or somebody was to talk to or find out in the neighborhood if that area does take on water as being an excavated area and March 16th 2000 sorry March of 2016 was a good example of a lot of water that was in that area at that time so I'll leave it at that okay thank you um so I'm going to um just ask if there, Raylene, if there's anybody else that has um, indicated they would like to speak and also give um, Ellie another chance um, after the comments about the cutting of stone. Just don't want anybody um, to not get their thoughts heard. So Ellie is the only one with her hand raised at the present time. Okay, so can you let uh, Ellie back in then please? She's there. Hi there. Okay. Um, so I can definitely provide some history with the flooding. So my family actually, uh, I grew up here on the street. So 
Uh, there hasn't been very much flooding that I know of in the pit. The flooding on Napoleon is, like you mentioned, east, and there's a, a dip there. So the 158 entrance is actually elevated. And to be honest, in my own experience, I've never seen it wet there personally. So yeah, I've been here three years and then from 81 to 2000. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ellie. Paul? Just, just I know 2016, I, I know from the photos that I have taken and stuff, and I know that you're right, uh, Ellie, that, that that entrance does does rise. But I just remember to the south of that street, it, 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 it just, there was a lot of resonance and, and it just seemed to swing around and, and maybe you had others, others that uh, as well. And, 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 and that's okay. As long as it didn't flood that area, that would be a perfect, uh, not, sorry, not perfect, but that would be an example of a time if it was going to flood, that would have yeah. been that time. Cause there was a lot of, that was the time when the ground was frozen and we had the ice storm and two rain, heavy rain events that particular March. And, yeah. and that year that uh, they had to let the boards out of the dam because of the Eugenia was it, they were quite concerned about the dam at that time as well. So I guess with that entrance being where the flooding is, um, it would seem strange to keep that one open where the near nearest to the flooding. I think um, maybe outside of the flooding, I just think that it's really important to remove that entrance because it's been the primary entrance uh, for years of the property. There's nowhere to park. Um, as uh, Chair Allen mentioned, the roads over the last couple of years, I didn't want to get into all these details because I'm a big supporter of rock solid, you know, in that space, but the roads have been really beat up. Um, there is a lot of trucks, there's dogs, there's kids, there's joggers. Um, when we look at the time change, the trucks are coming in and out when it's dark and it's just a lot of traffic for that corner and there's safety concerns there as well. Okay, thanks for that, Ellie. And you heard the comments from Councillor Allwood about um, that there, we, we maybe um, put in the site plan or the zoning that there could be the occasional cutting of stone. Um, I think that's, you know, just about any business, even though you don't do some things, there's the odd time when you have to do something. It, it could happen in somebody's backyard where somebody's cutting stone. So just as long as you're aware of that. Yeah, absolutely. And totally comfortable. It's really the traffic and the, the both. Yeah. So that's great. Totally loud and clear, super supportive. Just to clarify, just wanted to touch base on the entrance. That's great. Okay. Thank you, Ellie. Okay. Um, any last questions or comments from around the table? No? Okay. So as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Um, thank you, John. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, I think we're done. So I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned at 618. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.